Hello everyone, this is Lady Lena here with you and I'm here to share a quick vignette. Um, I pray that um, all is well um, in the make of um, this coronavirus that's trying to cope the earth, but we're going to pray against that in Jesus name. Amen. We're going to pray against that, that no harm is going to come to or near you or to your dwelling or, or to your family um in jesus name okay so i'm here to encourage those though encourage those who are weary and well doing and encourage those who are are tired and of doing a a, a hard thing and a, a hard thing is standing your grounds and in the face of fear in the opposition and right now in a scare like this the unknown you just don't know what's going to happen but you're waiting on the victory and you're standing on the promises of God so I'm here to encourage you just so hold on and for an example uh, for what I mean by a hard thing is um, uh, is these two women in the Bible. And first of all, um, my message is um, he used her. And my message is coming out Exodus 1, chapter Exodus 1 and Exodus, Exodus 17. So these two women, um, God put the spotlight on them. Okay, Shipra and Pua. And my attempt right now is to show you how God will bring the spotlight to you to revere, reveal his main intentions uh, for those who have done a hard thing, so those who he is trying to take out of hiding and bring to the forefront. So Shipra and Pua um, are these two Hebrew um, midwives. And midwife mean to help one to bear. So the Pharaoh had ordered them to kill the babies that was born male. Okay. Pharaoh was afraid that that uh, the Israel, Israelites was getting mighty in number. And perhaps one day they would... Um, team up with their enemies and um and fight against the them the egyptians okay and leaving them defeated so what he wanted to do is destroy them down to water them out to snuff them out so that they won't become stronger than them so he made them slaves and put hard tasks on him on them but these two women shipra and pua pua um, they didn't do what the Pharaoh said. In fact, uh, when the Pharaoh had addressed them uh, about, you know, what's going on, these women are having these babies and there still increases in number. So they said that they told the Pharaoh that these women are not like the Egyptians, like these Hebrew women are not like the Egyptians. By the time we get to them, they are already have the baby. See, and they are lively women. So they're not like the Egyptians. So I am, a, I'm a nurse. So I can uh, kind of understand why these women couldn't harm anyone that they was, took an oath to, to take care of, to do no harm. So, so God had put the spotlight, spotlight on these women because they have feared the Lord. They feared the Lord, um, and 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 God had put favor on their life. Um, I like to believe that um, it is known that they have lied. No, I don't believe they have lied. I believe they was more like actors. They was acting out the will of God, and that's why God had, the favor had rest on their lives. So they did that hard things. That hard thing. So God is going to bring you out of the shadows of others and let his intentions to be known because the intention and glory of God would rest on who he want to rest on, okay? 
God can do what he wanted to do. And I think the main intention for these two women, Shua, I mean, um, of Shipra and Pua, was to expose or bring the spotlight to Joshebad. Joshebad is the mother of Moses. Her appearance in the Bible is short, and there's not much known about her. But she, God used her. God used her because she did a hard thing. She too, um, you know, um, violated or outsmarted the Pharaoh the, when at the same time that God had put, I mean, the, that Pharaoh had put uh, uh, Edith out to kill all the males since Shipper and Pua um, had avoided uh, or neglected to carry out that Edith. So Josephine, she hid Moses. She hid Moses, and then she put him in the now. Okay, she put him in the ma she put him in the now, and that was God's main intention. God had brought the spotlight to reveal His main intention for Moses, for Moses to be a, a, a deliverer. And so Moses became a deliverer for the children of Israel to, to reveal that there was a greater thing expressing in the kingdom of God, in the shadows, behind the scenes, that God wanted to accomplish and bless the children of Israel with a promised land. So Moses was raised in the shadows of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And God brought the spotlight to him. Moses dug a well for himself and done that hard thing and, and a courageous thing and killed the Egyptian that was torturing a Hebrew slave that was his people. That murder caused him to flee to Median. Even though Moses is known for a great work in the Bible, he didn't receive the promise to enter the promised land because he was disobedient. He knew God very well. Moses was a friend of God. He talked to God face to face. And he knew to follow God's instruction. In fact, I believe God that Moses wouldn't do anything without God's instruction. While he was at medium there, Moses met and married Zipporah, the eldest daughter of Jethro, the priest of Median. God used her. I believe that God brought the spotlight to Jethro and Zipporah because of the faithfulness, of their faithfulness. They were like nomads in the shadows of nowhere in Median. There, 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 that is when Moses met God. The God that Jephro and Sapphira already knew, but that wasn't, but they wasn't the chosen people for God's plan. But God brought the spotlight to Jephro and Sapphira by sending Moses to Midian. Not much is known about them either. But they dug a well for themselves by knowing that God wanted, by knowing what God wanted, and they used the abilities within themselves to produce and satisfy the will of God. Their Zipporah, yes, Zipporah, Zipporah, who said hardly nothing, but her presence was absolutely necessary. Or Moses would have been dead long ago before he went to the mountain top to receive the Ten Commandments because God was going to kill him. So Zipporah circumcised Moses and their son Gershom. It seemed that Moses just wanted to refuse everything God presented with him. He didn't want to lead Israel out of bondage. He didn't want to speak. He didn't want his son circumcised. He didn't want to be circumcised. Moses was consistent and being in anger in God. Moses wasn't the one to capture God's heart. Because he refused to obey or to, to carry out the plan or readily um, carry out the plan. It was Zipporah. Zipporah was the spotlight. He used her. She performed that. She performed a covenant thing 
for what was really going on behind the scenes that Moses probably didn't understand. Because Moses at the time had an Egyptian mindset. He had to get that Egyptian uh, mentality out of his head because in his mind, he's still an Egyptian prince. So there Moses and Aaron, after God instructed Moses to deliver the children out of the bondage of Egypt. Moses and Aaron. Now I'm reading, um, I'm, I'm reading this sound like a book because um, I may turn it into a book, but I, I hope you read Exodus 1 and um, Exodus 17 um, and in 18, it will probably help you understand um, why I'm flowing like this. So Moses and Aaron, Everybody knew. Everybody knows their title and role. Aaron is the mouthpiece uh, and brother of, of Moses. God anointed him high priest, and God said in Exodus seven that he was a prophet, or he is a pro prophet. And Moses, God told Moses, Moses in Exodus seven that he is a god to Pharaoh, a small g, a small g god. But in fact, he was a god to Pharaoh. So. Moses listened. Moses listened. He had to listen to instructed. Moses needed to be instructed. So, um, so Moses was a god to Pharaoh and in our prophet, but Jephro is only known as a shepherd in the backside of the desert. But the beautiful thing that Jephro did was great. He performed as if he was on the council of God and mentored and struck, instructed Moses. When Moses parted the Red Sea with the rod of God in his hand, the rod of God is known as Aaron's rod would represent the presence of God, the glory of God. And Aaron, the priest and mouthpiece um, um, for, uh, for Moses had always been side to side, um, been, by, been side to side. They were side to side when the children of Israel um, walked across the Red Sea on dry, dry ground. Moses knew from all the plagues that he performed in e with Egypt with the rod of God that eventually led Pharaoh, let the people go. M Moses knew he had something great in his hand, the rod of God. So at Rephidium in chapter 18, God instructed Moses to struck the rock and water came out for the Israelites. We know that Moses struck the rock at two different times. However, this was the first time and all was well. And the second time Moses struck the rock, he struck out with God. God had enough of Moses and Moses could not lead the Israel into the promised land. Well, anyway, at Rephidium, the Amalekites went to war on Israel and Moses told Joshua to choose men and go to battle against the Amalekites. Amalekites and he will take the rod of God to the top of the hill. However, the Bible said Moses, Aaron, and her went to the top of the hill. So I was saying, who is her? You might be saying, who is her? Um, Moses is a God, little G. Aaron is a prophet. But who is her? And why did he choose her? I mentioned earlier that Moses would do nothing but without God instructions. Moses may have been a bit resistant, but I don't think he purposely um, was disobedient. But God put the spotlight on her. What if, hypothetically um, speaking, if he didn't bring her with him to the top? As the Bible said, says, as long as Moses had held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hand, 
the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hand grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and her held up his hand, one on one side and one on the other side. So that his hand remained steady to sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites army with the sword. Hallelujah. So what do you do when you are between a rock and a hard place? What do you do? You sit on it. They saw a rock so Moses can sit on. So you saying, yes, yes, they saw a rock. So, so what about her? I mean, what about her? What about her? What would it look like if he didn't use her? I would tell you, I would tell you that they wouldn't have won the battle against the uh, enemy behind the scenes um, with just Aaron and Moses. Aaron's arms would have become just as tired as Moses trying to hold Moses' weary arms up so they can win till sunset. So if he didn't bring her, it would have just been Moses and Aaron. But God positioned her shoulder to shoulder with Moses. Her wasn't shoulder to shoulder with Aaron. You see, something bigger was going on behind the scenes that God was trying to reveal or enlighten Moses and Aaron. You see, Moses and Aaron dependent on the rock of God like they always have, but it wasn't working out like they expected it to. Well, well, pastor, we always did it this way. This is the order of God this way. And God, you yourself told us, yes, you told the Pharisees, and the Sadducees and the Maccabees, how to do it. Yes, yes, the bishops always led this way. Ministers always ministered this way. And the choir, the age old choir, always sung this way. And these kind of deacons and ushers always done things this way. So this is the holy, holy way and the only way. So the spirit is going to slay this way. This is the order of God. Yes, yes, yes. In the past, we was very successful this way. I mean, because that's how God had planned it. But you can't place God in a box and make him be out the way he you have always thought of him to be. You God is much, much bigger than we can house them in our minds and frame them in our minds and thinking that we're put them in the box and we're not going to let them out. Yes, yes, Moses had the rod of God in his hand. Yes, Moses became wary. Yes, Moses had Aaron Bishop by his side always, but it was her time to come out of hiding and stand shoulder to shoulder with the leader and the spotlight was on her. Now God is using her to help. Her had an unusual anointing. Without her being on top like God instructed, they would have never been able to move the rock. And 
They would have lost everything. Everything. They would have lost the war. Her comes out of hiding to help win. When Joseph, when Joshua was when Joshua was down there fighting, he didn't know that there was something greater maturing behind the scenes while Moses had his hand on the rod of Aaron or the rod of God. Who hand was on Moses? Aaron and her. And to make that roll into a higher dimension of thinking on what was really going on. The hand of God wasn't fully on the rod of God. The hand of God wasn't fully on Aaron. And uh, the hand of God wasn't fully on Moses. And the only thing different out the equation that would normally be there to make them Victoria was her. God play, can place his glory anywhere he wants, anytime he chooses. Uh, and because he shifted his glory to her, Joshua was empowered by the Spirit of God to slay that way. Her was from the tribe of Judah. Her presence was absolutely necessary as a tribute to Jesus. The promise is on the Davidic, the Davidic kingdom. Her presence represented the strength and power of God to move the rock. So in Genesis 49.10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler staff from between his feet until tri tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. But when the Pharisees so God is prom is this a promise keeper and he kept his promise to Abraham, and in fact, he is still keeping his promise to Abraham. But when the Pharisees and Sadducees and the unbelieving Jews didn't believe that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was in flesh, and the spotlight is on Jesus, and the spotlight would always be on Jesus, and when the when when Jesus was dying on the cross, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God intentions fell on after Jesus died on the cross because Jesus is our Savior. He's forever on the spotlights and every knee shall bow, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is, is the Lord. And guess what? It was the intention of God to move the spotlight on the satirian for he said truly, this man was the son of God. And something is greater going on behind the scenes because uh, we are waiting for our Messiah. He is surely coming back. And I pray that you are obedient. Thank you. Be blessed.